Welcome to Study Session 2, Preparation and Delivery of Oral Presentation. Introduction. The preparation and delivery of oral presentation is an art that requires good communication skills. The presenter must at least be able to elicit the interest and attention of the audience. Therefore, it is often essential that the presenter has a foreknowledge of the expectations of the audience. In this study, you will learn how to prepare a good oral presentation, the various methods of delivery, and the requirements of a presenter during oral presentations. At the end of this study, you should be able to 1. Discuss the preparation of a good oral presentation. 2. Outline the various methods of delivering an oral presentation. 3. Explain the requirements of a presenter during an oral presentation. Preparation of a good oral presentation. Irrespective of the method of delivery, the presenter must consider the following parameters in preparing for the presentation. Knowledge of the audience, knowledge of subject, use of time and rehearsal, personal appearance and grooming. Additionally, the preparation and use of visual aids is an important element of any effective presentation. Knowledge of the audience. How much does your audience already know about the subject? Know the age level of the audience as well as its members level of educational sophistication and special interests. Tailor your presentation accordingly. Knowledge of subject. Whether you use notes, manuscripts or strictly memory, you must know your subject well. Use of time and rehearsal. Time limits are to be observed. Even if no time limit is given, you should strive to do justice to your subject in as little time as possible, but not at the price of an incomplete presentation. You must decide which aspects of your presentation is to be treated with details and which aspects are to be included for additional information and color. The key to effective and efficient use of time is rehearsal. Your presentation must be within the target time limit. Personal appearance. Your personal appearance affects your credibility. Informal clothing is rarely appropriate for a professional presentation. Pay significant attention to personal grooming. Presentation delivery. You have prepared a well-organized presentation and now it is time to actually deliver it to a real audience. To make sure that you reap the full benefits of your efforts, during the presentation, pay attention to your voice and enthusiasm, eye contact, use of voice, and the use of time. 1. Poise and enthusiasm. People tend to upgrade or downgrade the case a speaker presents to the level of the speaker's competence in presenting the material. Be well prepared and strive for muscular control, alert attention, vibrant interest in the subject, and an eagerness to communicate. Avoid distracting mannerism, but don't stand in a frozen position. Move about, if not excessive, can accentuate your enthusiasm. Eye contact. Eye contact is analogous to plugging into your audience brain. At some time during the presentation, try making eye contact with every person in the room. Avoid fastening your gaze on your notes, on your chart or screen, on some point in space above the head of your listeners. 3. Use of voice. Do not speak too softly, too fast or mumble. Your audience must be able to hear what you say and understand what you say. Use voice emphasis to stress important points. 4. Use of time. Without adequate preparation, it is easy to become nervous and start rushing through a presentation. Instead, use the pacing established during your many rehearsals. You planned your presentation, now follow the plan. Do not suddenly decide to wing it and roll off on some tangent or skip a whole section and then find yourself needing to backtrack. Once you do such things, your sense of time and pacing will be severely compromised. Patience is very thin. If appropriate, quickly wrap up this particular part of the presentation and move on to the next part, making sure, of course, that no important points are left out. This problem should never exist if you properly prepare. 
there are at least four methods for making oral presentation. The best of these is the extemporaneous method. The worst is the impromptu method. The Two Works Dictionary defines extemporaneous as spoken with preparation but not written out or memorized and impromptu as without preparation or advanced thought offhand. In between these two are the memorization method and the reading method. The extemporaneous method involves significant effort but results in a degree of quality that tells your audience that you care about them. It requires the detailed layout of the presentation from beginning to end, doing your homework to fill in your knowledge gaps. The use of 3 by 5 cue cards or similar method to jog your memory on the specifics and keep your presentation on track. The impromptu method is characterized by poor organization and incompleteness. It tells the audience that you are indifferent about them. The memorization method is risky. You can lose your place or leave something out and in a panic you might revert to the impromptu method resulting in disaster. Finally, the reading method might be acceptable if you are presenting a discourse of some technical topic about which you lack expertise. An example could be in presenting a paper at a technical meeting for a colleague who might be ill. 5. Languages It is important to remember that the language used in a presentation reflects upon you and your credibility. Use only professional language appropriate to the audience and the topic. Make sure that correct grammar and word choices are used throughout the presentation. 6. Visual aids Visual aids can make or break your presentation. In a technical presentation, they are absolutely required. They can help you keep your presentation on track as well as assist your audience in following your main thoughts. They may be used as a guide in helping you remember the main topics and their order. For example, you could either show a series of slides or transparencies or use a computer presentation graphics application such as PowerPoint and explain each visual as your presentation progresses. Rehearse your presentation with the visual aids you will actually use during the presentation. Don't read the slides to your audience but use them to guide and focus your audience's attention, reinforce your main points and provide detail. Finally, do not use a visual aid until the appropriate moment. Likewise, take down any visual aid as soon as you are finished. 7. Slides, Transparencies and Computer Graphic Displays Slides, transparencies and computer graphic displays should have clarity, be informative, visually pleasing and not too complex. The form factor of each slide, transparency or screen should have the following attributes. Letter size or similar aspect ratio. Landscape orientation as contrasted to portrait orientation. Easy to read typefaces such as Times Roman or El Vertica, also known as Area, with a minimum font size of 36 points. Each frame should contain no more than five, preferably three points. Color can be used quite effectively for emphasis and showing relationships. 8. Show and tell articles. Show and tell using actual article can be effective for small group audiences, especially if the props can be passed around, but of little value if the audience members in the back row cannot see the item. 9. Some basic questions to ask about an audience are 1. Who will I be speaking to? 2. What do they know about my topic already? 3. What do they want to know about my topic? 4. What do I want them to know by the end of the talk? By basing the content and style of your presentation on your answers to these questions, you can make sure that you are in tune with your audience. What you want to say about your topic may be much less important than what your audience wants to hear about it. Summary of study session In this study session, you have learned that in preparing for an oral presentation, the presenter must have a good knowledge of the audience and the subject of his presentation. 
you must also consider the efficient use of time and rehearsal as well as his personal appearance and grooming. During the presentation, he should pay attention to his voice and enthusiasm, eye contact, the use of voice as well as the use of time. There are at least four methods of making an oral presentation, namely extemporaneous, impromptu, memorization and reading methods. This is the end of study session 2. Thank you.